What are some psychology experiments with interesting results? Mice were put on two sides of a wall with a door in. Only the right mouse could open the door. Slowly, they filled the left mouse's room with water and eventually when right mouse saw them in danger, they opened the door. However, mice that had previously been on he left side, and were now on the right, mice who had previously been wetted opened the door considerably faster, because they knew how unpleasant it was to be in the other scenario. Basically mice have empathy. This makes me happy. I wish more posts on this were about things like this. I want to know more. Edit. I just mean it makes me really happy to see that mice have those sorts of feelings. Too many times we are taught by the media that animals don't have those types of feelings. So it made me smile to think that a little cute mouse saved the other mouse. As if a human would. Empathy is consciousness simulating consciousness. When you are talking to someone through a medium, internet, real life, you are estimating their conscious state by recursively defining your own conscious state in their terms in order to predict their future behavior. That's why mentally ill people are treated so poorly, it's hard to predict their behavior thus dehumanizing them. Idonic Adaptation Put simply, a person who had just won the lottery and another person who had just been paralyzed took a survey to measure their life contentment. Obviously it was high and low, respectively. However, they both took the same survey a year later, and both scored similarly. The point being that regardless what happens to you in life, good or bad, you will always adapt and spend most of your life feeling neutral. This is really interesting. I never thought about this. I guess you have completely new highs and lows under different circumstances. There was some study I read about a few years ago that says people's overall happiness is either set at a young age or just kind of innate. You tend to be happy or unhappy regardless of your situation, as where most people tend to think you are made happy or unhappy by life. It kind of measures well with what I've observed. I've known incredibly well to do people and incredibly poor people. Happiness doesn't seem to correlate to that a lot from my experience. But maybe I'm just looking for an excuse as to why I'm a miserable bastard when I have most the things most people want. Although to counter the study I'll say that the happiest people I've known generally have lots of people who care about them and who they care about. And I've never known someone who is simultaneously happy and lonely. One time I participated in a paid research experiment. I was basically tricked into thinking I was drunk. I was placed in a room with two other people and we were instructed to drink vodka with cranberry juice over a period of time while we socialized. After we drank I was placed in a room where I had to read some flashing words on a computer. I felt pretty drunk at this point. When the researcher came back into the room he gave me my car keys and said I was never actually given alcohol. He briefly told me that, because I was anticipating drinking for this experiment, that my brain had tricked me into feeling the effects of being intoxicated. I immediately snapped out of it, and was completely amazed at how I felt. I've done this to younger siblings and relatives that won't shut up about wanting to drink shots. We just rub a bit of alcohol round the rim of the shot glass and fill it with water 3 deep and feel start snoozing on the sofa within the hour. I knew someone who seemed to think half a margarita makes you tipsy she'd drink a couple sips of one and start acting jiggly and saying it's the drink when asked. I'm sure her back was quite low. Edit. No, I don't mean an entire margarita. I mean a few sips of a watered down mug from TGI Fridays. Well, did you consider she had low tolerance to alcohol? I'm always surprised with some people's low tolerance. My friend once drank two Mike's Hards and pass out in a closet. I just can't comprehend that level of inebriation for that amount of alcohol. Solomon Ash's experiment on conformity. He set up a test wherein he would show three lines of different lengths to five or six individuals. I forgot the exact number, who had to state which line was the longest of the three. The thing is, only the last individual is the participant and the others are actors paid to answer in a specific manner. 
for the first few questions, they choose the correct answer, but later on they start choosing the wrong one. The participants are conflicted as to whether they will say the correct answer or conform to the wrong answer as to not be judged by others or due to self-doubt of their own answers. In the end, most do conform. It's really interesting since it shows how powerful conformity is in the face of doubt up to a point that some even question their own sanity during the test. Another variation of the experiment also had interesting results. It had the same setup with 5 individuals with the last person being the participant. However, this time some of the actors say the wrong answer, while one actor says the correct one. There was an increase in participants, who would choose the correct answer and avoid conformity. It shows how much doubt one can have on oneself when alone, but be brought back to self-confidence when they find outside support. Edit. Conformity in participants might be caused by either being afraid others judgment or due to self-doubt. It is amazing. I did this experiment in my school as a high school thesis kind of thing and the age difference affects the results. The older the kid the quicker they decided to change their answer. I definitely be curious to see how this is represented in different age groups. I'd expect teenagers to be more likely to conform than elementary schoolers. At my age, I'd like to think I'd be removed after calling the others dumb fucks, but then, I've read about the study before, so I'm not sure whether that'd be my natural response. Split brain studies. One example, by providing differing information to each hemisphere of the brain in split brain individuals, those with a severed corpus callosum, meaning there's no communication between the two hemispheres, they found that people would actually physically grab their own hand with their other hand, if they saw it making a mistake. Basically each side of the brain controls one side of your body, and in split brain people you can actually make both sides display a disagreement with the other, which is insane, if you think about it. There's another similar experiment where people with split brains have one eye able to see a picture and the other eye can't see it. Then they draw the picture with one hand. While they're drawing the picture, if you ask them, they have no idea what the image they're being shown is, it's like they can't see it, even though they can draw it. Also, if you give someone like this a fork and cover their left eye, they'll be able to tell you what you use it for, but not be able to recall what it's called. Then cover the other eye and they'll instantly be able to tell you that it's a fork, but will have no idea what you use it for. Weird butyl so interesting gas fuck. If you train a rat to press a lever for cocaine and then put it in a box with only that lever, it will press that lever as much as you'll allow it. The rat will stop eating and drinking and just do cocaine. If you train a rat to press a lever for cocaine and then put it in an enriched environment, egg other rats to play with, toys, place to explore, where it can still press the lever for cocaine. It may press the lever occasionally but not as frequently as its counterpart in the dull environment. These findings were a big deal in the behaviorism world because they put a lot of previous results into context and help explain the link between poverty and drug use. Edit. Wow. I didn't expect this to blow up like this. I'm on mobile and don't have access to a computer right now so linking sources will be difficult, but a google search of rat park will pull up plenty of sources. I was wrong about the rats being conditioned using cocaine. It was morphine, but the idea is still the same. Many people have pointed out errors with these experiments, and there are plenty, but that's the beauty of science. It allows for the development of testable hypotheses which can change given the current state of evidence. Also, thank you for the silver kind stranger. Edit 2. This experiment does not prove that bad environments facilitate drug use, or that good environments protect against it. Addiction is immensely complex and this is just a small piece of it. Research on learned helplessness is fascinating. Researchers would put dogs into shuttle boxes, long cage-like structures, that the dog could move around in, and would shock the dog through the floor on one side of the box. The dog, at first, could easily escape the shock, 
by moving to the other side of the box. Eventually, the researcher adds a wall, so the dog can't escape the shocks. It just sits there, being shocked without escape. Through this the dog learns helplessness over repeated trials and extended periods of time. Even when the wall is taken down, the dog won't walk to the other side and avoid the shocks anymore. It has become so used to the pain that it doesn't even try to escape when escape would be easy. This research has been used to explain certain aspects of human behavior, especially related to repeated experiences of abuse, addiction, and poverty. It takes a long time to get somebody out of this mindset, and is possibly one of the reasons why people get stuck in terrible situations. Thank you for what I might call an epiphany. Edit. Wow guys. I'm overwhelmed by the wonderful motivational comments. Just to fill you in, I've had a teensy bit of a drug problem for the last 7 or so years, and have been 1 month sober now. I had a rough day today and really struggled not to fall back into old habits, but reading this information filled me with a sense of motivation to carry on. Knowledge is power. Edit 2. What the hell I don't know what to say. The amount of support I'm receiving has made me feel so loved. I appreciate everyone for sharing their stories and their advice with me. Honestly, this one thread is going to be all of the motivation I need to hold the strength to keep going, and it's going to be in my pocket. I really don't know what else to say, except, ditto, to everyone. Please don't hesitate to contact me, if I can do anything to help, because that will help me as well. I truly feel so much love for you all. Today is a bright day. The influence of the color red in sports. Judges were shown a video of a Taekwondo match and awarded more points to the red competitor versus the blue competitor. When the colors were digitally reversed, judges awarded more points to the other, now red, competitor. Edit. Since there's a lot more interest than I expected. Here's some more info. Red may be a signal of dominance as red and skin is associated with higher testosterone, or possibly higher fertility in women. Wearing red may induce intrinsic psychological effects which increase dominance in addition to altering the perception of others. Researchers found that putting red leg bands on birds increased dominant behavior, as they took the lion's share of the food. For my psychology degree dissertation, I presented photos of men to be rated on a scale of friendly, 0, to threatening, 10. Men received a higher threat score, if I photoshopped their t-shirt to be red. If you stare into a dimly lit, that is candle lit, mirror for 10 plus minutes you start to see hallucinations. What individuals see tends to vary, but they've used this as a test to simulate schizophrenia before, because some see monsters slash deformities slash general weird shit. I did a variation of it for a mate at uni and completely wimped out of it. After my face started not looking like my face anymore, I had a complete dissociation. I stopped looking and just waited out the time. Edit. I can't find the exact study as I don't have journal access anymore. But here's a decent summary of it in layman's terms. Edit 2. This is a weird visual trick that your brain can play on you, but the effects can seem super real so maybe don't do this, if you are susceptible to hallucinations slash are a wimp with this kinda shit like me. Edit 3, thanks for the gold, and yes it is basically a scientific bloody mary. The resentful effect, the prejudice and expectations you have towards a student slash contestant slash etc highly dictates his performance in the long run. Look it up. Acapite Malian effect. I was at an educational weekend for teachers and the lecturer asked, or rather challenged, whether we want to know stuff about our students, when we first start teaching them, what their strengths and weaknesses are, what we have to be careful about etc. It broke my heart when a large number of teachers said yes, it made their job easier. I spoke up, saying it's better not to know anything, except health and safety concerns because it's then easier to avoid prejudice and some of them quite haughtily replied they are mature enough to avoid that, as if it's SDH, that doesn't happen subconsciously. It's sad teachers aren't taught these things while in training, 